ladies and gentlemen, we are diving straight into our last panel discussion for the day, which will talk about the new world of esports. Chairing this session is Pratik Gupta, co-founder of Foxymoron and Zoom Media. And we have with us on our panel, Anirudh Pandita, founder Pocket Aces, Dr. Rishindra Sinha, CEO and founder Global Esports, Vineet Sharma, Category Director, Mountain Dew, PepsiCo, Amit Doshi, Chief Marketing Officer, Lenovo, Ankit Panth, Red Bull Athlete, and Siddharth Kedia, Chief Executive Officer, Not Been Gaming. Thank you for your patience with us, uh, gentlemen. A very warm welcome to all of you, and I'd like a moderator to take the session forward. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, can, can everyone hear me clearly? Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah, yeah this okay, is Okay, so, okay. So I know it's it must have been a long day for everybody, but I think we're going to have a little bit of fun while we chat about the 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 future of uh, esports. Uh, I think for me, uh, one of the things that 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 really strikes out when we're talking about esports and gaming and you know the entire ecosystem is passion and passion points. Uh, I think passion has been something that that has driven a large part of marketing and marketing communications, and passion is something that obviously drives this community at large. Um, and I think uh, with that, uh, we have the entire ecosystem, uh, which is here with us today. I think my voice is echoing, uh, is it for you? Okay, I think it's better now. So uh, so anyway, so I was talking about passion and passion points and, and, and we've actually got the whole community inside of eSports here with us today. We have an athlete who's representing you know the athlete side of the of the system. We have streaming platforms. We have an e-gaming company. We have the hardware side of things, and obviously, very importantly, we have the brand side. You know, which is what everybody is looking at from to get the money from to keep this community alive and kicking. So I think from uh, from that point of view, we have a very well-rounded uh, panel of uh, of experts. Uh, I'd like to start the session by basically, uh, you know, understanding the ecosystem of esports right where it is currently sitting uh, what it was about 5 years ago and i and you know and i i read a very fun factoid which says the term esports was uh, put into the oxford dictionary only as late as 2015 so it's been 6 years but the fact that we're all sitting here with with immense numbers is is just testament to how fast this category has grown uh, so just want to understand where it was where it is today uh, from everybody and get a different perspective of uh, you know where where everyone is sitting at. So I'd I'd like to start with where most of the money comes from. Uh, we need. Uh, you'd like to tell us a little bit about how you think. Uh, you know the esport community is 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 moving. No, I think esports community is the gaming. First of all, I think let me pull back. Talk about gaming. Gaming as a passion point as something which has really grown in the last four to five years. And I think initially we had always it, it started off with an online medium, but gradually uh, I think with mobile really going deep. It, that's when it that was a big explosion in terms of uh, and once people people start gaming as a part gaming participated in gaming they were always a top up in terms of esports etc. I think even for us as do we started off with an on ground event uh, and started off in online but gradually as mobile mobile become big became big we start expanding into so we've almost grown ten times from 2016 when we started off so our the participation etc has almost grown ten times so it's and personally we feel that. Uh, in fact, we didn't do the on-ground like the last couple of years because we feel with the virtual environment, it'll be far bigger. And therefore, what we're trying to do is to say how do we, how do we really take it virtual in terms of really capturing the 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 billions of people which eventually are going to go on this platform. So, uh, talking about the virtual platform, you know, I think uh, Anirudh, if you can if you can step in and and basically comment on you know from from being the founder of Pocket Aces, which is you know was supposed to be delving uh, into a lot of uh, you know fiction based content and and into that sort of a space where when and why did gaming come into the fore of uh, of what you guys are doing yeah thanks for having us here and guys it's always uh, fun to be uh, on these events and talk to you guys uh, in terms of our own journey it's been a pretty uh, straightforward experience of having gaming become a focus area. Uh, I think as a company, we've always focused on where consumers are spending their time and how they're solving uh, their boredom, where are they uh, entertaining themselves. And I think in the last year uh, or two, you've seen that 
massive inflection point of number of gamers and gamers, not only hyper casual gamers, but also gamers in terms of people who play games like PUBG and Free Fire, these kind of games which really marry skill and strategy and are therefore fun to watch, right? Which was primarily uh, PC driven earlier. So you're seeing those uh, games really get that audience set and that has also had a, uh, you know, uh, had a bullish effect on P PC games also. So people started really appreciating uh, what it means to play a Valorant, for example, right? So that has done really well this year. So I think when you see where people are hanging out, where they're uh, uh, getting entertained, uh, gaming was a natural uh, next step for us. In fact, we felt, uh, you know, with the phone becoming the centerpiece of uh, the entertainment experience, uh, you know, interactive entertainment or gaming and short video were the two big places which traditional media could not service, right? Television is becoming OTT, but actually OTT is not where you're spending most of your time during the day and in the evenings as well now. So um, now in the next phase of uh, the Indian entertainment experience, as you go from 2020 onwards, as phones get better, internet gets better, people just don't want to be dumb consumers. They also want to interact. They want to create. And I think you are seeing the beginning of a pretty large 10 year movement uh, in that sense. And so for us, it was a very natural thing uh, to be involved with. Okay, talking about, you know, where people are spending time and, you know, enabling platforms for these people to spend a lot more time with, you know, us, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll move this conversation to, I think, Siddharth and, uh, and, and Rushindra, where, you know, you guys are creating uh, platforms and these platforms, uh, I mean, I was trying to figure out how to uh, how to define Nordwin Gaming, right? But it almost seemed like it's a gaming company that 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 almost does anything. I didn't want to call it an agency, and I did not want to call it infrastructure. But uh, it almost seems like you know you want to be sitting at the center of enabling this gaming movement in India. So you know, where do you see this, uh, Siddharth, and 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 why did this become a centrifugal point of of where your where your business was going? Sure. So, uh, you know, let me give you two analogies to just illustrate how gaming has evolved or esports has evolved over the last five years. Uh, the first analogy is esports is like cricket. Started as a five day test match, it was a gentleman's game. Primary language of communication was English. You know, only the elite could afford to play, afford to watch. Going forward from, uh, from a five day to a one day to a 220, where cricket got truly democratized. The first time that you saw not just Hindi, but vernacular uh, came in, in in commentary across, you know, it became true. It truly got democratized, whether it was IPL, whether it was T20. Esports has gone through the same journey. Esports was a, was a PC dominion. The language was English. The affordability was Europe, US could afford it. India affordability of PC gaming was always a question mark. But when when mobile democratized it, so for example, in esports, the primary language of communication is Hindi now. It's not English anymore. English is not even the second language. It's Hindi, Bangla, Tamil. English comes a distant third or a fourth. So that's the transition that esports has had in terms of viewership, right? And and that has predominantly been uh, been contributed by the mobile uh, part of the things. The second analogy that I would give is the player participation. The, the whole gaming is, is good movement, which has taken over, play a part together, which has taken over, you know. So 2020, for example, was really coming out of, of gaming and esports in a country like India. Yeah. So what, what used to be in dorm rooms, what used to be in, you know, closed doors came out as a family sport. It came out as, as a family activity. And that was a huge shift that happened in 2020. And again, mobile has been one of the key contributors and the other, the other example is, and it's a funny story, uh, you know, four years back, I was at Viacom, Akshat, our founder at Nordwin used to be, uh, you know, still running Nordwin and he came to us and he was talking about uh, media rights and I asked Akshat, okay, what's the kind of viewership that you get? And Akshat, because if I'm going to buy media rights or something, I need to understand the viewership. Akshat said 50. And I'm looking at him saying, dude, you're missing the unit, thousand, million, lakh, crore, what are you talking about? He said, no, absolute number 50. And I just looked at him and said, you've got to be kidding me, man. You were telling me viewership is 50. If you were not a friend of mine for the last 10 years, you know, I wouldn't have even asked you for tea. This meeting would have been over now. He said, no, trust me, we will be a million viewers before you know it. And lo and behold, our peak viewership last year in some of our tournaments crossed 1 million. And that's the journey esports has seen in the last three to four years. And, and when you see that journey, 
that's why nordwin is where nordwin is you know we have created the market we have created this industry in india we have created the esports media market media rights market in india we have created some of the biggest tournaments that one can talk of and ankit is sitting right there he will add more to that dr rushindra is here you know we've all been part of the same ecosystem uh, and and that's what i have to say as introduction i think i'll let the others talk for now so uh, amit is already segued to you so i won't uh, i won't uh, kill the flow so what do you have to say about where 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 uh, where esports is in india and and how does that uh, augur for your business uh, as we sit today hey uh, thanks thanks prateek and great uh, to be with this panel here uh, look i i think siddharth uh, and anirudh set the context beautifully i really don't have uh, much to add and and we've also seen the ripples of that in our categories uh, we're present in uh, gaming pcs uh, we also have presence in tablets smartphones and uh, it's an impact that the whole category and uh, we have as as a business uh, felt we had to in fact as lenovo completely reimagine our gaming business the way yeah. it was about 5 years back and the way it is now uh, it, it's completely different uh, earlier we would have a line of products that were gaming friendly and then we had to go back to the scratch go back to the community go back to uh, people who really uh experience gaming and our uh, leading edge and ask them what is it that uh, we could have done as a company and uh, that's how uh, our gaming brand legion was born and in fact uh, we take a lot of pride that it was uh, pretty much co-created uh, along with the community and and that's why uh, if you look at a legion it looks very different from from everything else uh so uh, huge uh, huge force uh behind uh, the whole growth that we've seen in the pc category not just in terms of numbers and volumes but also in terms of how much an individual a customer is willing to today pay for a computer that table has absolutely gone up uh one is this whole market where people want to buy specialist uh, gaming pcs but uh, even if uh, uh, someone is is looking to buy a laptop for uh, for their classes or for you know doing their work or running their business this has become one of the key criteria uh, yeah. will it play games will it uh, will it hold up to what i what i want to even if i'm not buying uh, a gaming pc so it's it's just become so pivotal uh, to overall uh, consumption of of the device one of the very you know one of the very uh, more interesting things that 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 uh, that that we've been noticing in the marketing circles right and we work with a lot of mobile uh, phone brands itself is that the camera was always the the reason for a mobile phone to sell um, and uh, over the last about uh, 15 odd months and and you know highly accelerated during the whole 2020 uh, you know 2020 lockdown and you know everybody you know staying at home uh the conversation for the first time right and and we were really tired of launching new phones which had a differential of a camera which you could never mm-hmm. see but you would often speak about uh finally the the processing power finally the you know the the graphics the fact that you have a end to end display um uh, and the and the conversation changing even in a bo- in a marketing room or a product room of a mobile phone was evident to us in terms of you know in terms of how people are actually moving in that sort of a sort of a space so um uh, rushinder how have you utilized this whole ecosystem of hardware of brands of you know content creators um and you know what do you see is where esports is currently uh so i think everyone else has said president really well uh the gaming ecosystem really started off with pc gaming i know the early days were in south korea but even growing up even as early as 2001 2002 i grew up playing counter strike tournaments and then moved on to dota and it's always been about pc gaming and that was always the biggest barrier the entry barrier was the cost involved an average indian household didn't have a pc unless you know you either needed it someone in the house needed it for work or for very specifically for gaming that's the only reason that people would go out and buy pcs because i think india skipped that entire generation and moved on to mobile phones the rest of the world right. everyone made sure that they had a computer in their house but in india on using whatsapp and you know 4g data becoming so cheap everyone went straight on to doing their business doing their work everything on their mobile phones 
and then obviously the pandemic happened and then lockdown came in and suddenly people started buying computers again they needed a pc at home so that they could whether it was for work whether it was for school a lot of people needed it for zoom calls so that they could you know uh, so that the children could attend classes and all of a sudden we saw this shift and mobile gaming became so popular and that entry of barrier was suddenly taken away where it was so easy it was so accessible anyone who had a phone in their pocket could pull it out download a game and get going and with esports rising so fast the number of tournaments the number of tournament platforms and you know just in general education and uh, information about the esports and gaming industry made it so easy for everyone to enter in and now that people have gotten into the ecosystem they're exploring other options so i know people who never played a game in their life and that started with a game like pubg mobile which was a great uh, you know which was a great entrant into the space and then from there they started learning more about online gaming they started learning more about esports a lot of them went and got out a pc some of them even started their, uh, you know started streaming or put their tried their own hand at content creation so it became this really exciting space where people wanted to know more about it they were introduced through mobile gaming and now they are buying more hardware they're getting a better webcam they're getting better lights so that they can stream better they're upgrading their stuff as they go along but it all started with the mobile phone that was in their pocket super and and you know I'll just take uh, uh, siddharth's analogy ahead you know and we've spoken to all the people who are supporting the cricketers but now let's speak to the cricketer themselves or i would hate i know he would hate to be called one but uh, ankit uh, what do you think is the is the space that you know that uh, that that athletes like you and, and and i'm glad they call you athletes right because it it takes as much preparation it takes as much time and it takes as much effort uh, to do what you do as consistently as what you do it uh, and you know how have you seen the journey over the last so many years and 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 how do you feel about it today uh, i remember uh, you know playing for uh, mouse pads uh, D- movie dvds and you know uh, paying 500 or you know 1000 bucks for registering for a tournament to uh, playing events uh, like esl india premiership which not win gaming does i've uh, i've seen uh, events you know ha- scam events where uh, some uh, uh, bollywood and uh, some singers were invited and there were teams from all uh, uh, across the world there present one of the top teams at that point of time counter strike 1.6 uh, and uh, moscow 5 was there so and that event was a fraud so now the, there was a time where you know everyone started saying that nothing is going to happen uh, in the indian esports scene and that's when not win gaming you know started uh, uh, doing uh, legit events and uh, when it comes to us players we were like kaun sa event not win gaming hai okay let's play i paise mil jayenge because that was the uh, time where you know we had to actually save money to even get i'm talking about myself because i come from a very humble background so 500 and 1000 bucks was also a lot for me traveling to you know cities like delhi for national finals uh pune and all these uh, cities to compete was also a big thing but now uh, online qualifiers are there you don't have to pay for uh, you know tournament registrations uh, you just have to show your skills and if you keep winning then you'll keep uh, you know leveling up and then you can go on la- go and uh, play lan finals but i have seen it uh, you know happen in a very good way but i still feel it's taking time and also there should be a bit of consistency is what from a player's perspective i can tell you now yes nordin gaming is trying uh, is doing some events uh, there was dio arena which was like a prize position for us because if we won that tournament uh, our name would uh, you know come on the bottle now with brands like uh, red bull also we have started uh, uh, you know red bull uh, frag out red bull flick uh, then uh, there is now red bull campus clutch for valorant uh, more for mobile we have red bull mio so now there are multiple tournaments which i can show my parents and tell them to see uh, it's not a one time thing earlier it used to be that if i don't win this tournament i will not get any money and i won't be able to you know uh, sustain my passion sustain my living but now after uh, all playing all these events after doing basically the jump in my career and entire shift happened when i played u cipher that was aired on mtv after that you know i got it i started signing multiple uh, seven figure deals i became the brand ambassador of alienware brand ambassador of intel sponsored by corsair red bull athlete that's when actually my parents thought okay this is not uh, he, he's not joking this is a legit profession earlier they used to think that okay 
he's uh, maybe he's going to a gaming cafe and i should stop him why because they saw you know the people who are abusing drinking smoking uh, being aggressive shouting and till today i don't drink i don't smoke so i took all their questions because i knew if i couldn't convince my parents this journey would be would have been stopped then and there and the one thing that they wanted was studies and i told them that i'll manage my studies but let me you know do this because i want to represent my country and representing my country was the biggest motivation that i you know started for and i did that in dubai and after that now by when my parents see that okay he is a known guy in the community respected guy and you know, he has fans the brands are supporting him then uh, when i came on uh, bbc world news that was an eye opener for my mamas because they have done big uh, they have they have done mbas and they they work for big companies so even they thought that you know this is a one time thing and ek saal karega chhod dega two years he will do he'll uh, finish it off but now 4 years 5 years 15 years yes struggle was there but the whole change started happening since last 3 4 years and it's a good thing that now you know we have uh, global esports not win gaming in view arena and loco all these guys now we are building that ecosystem which we needed from the start i needed from the start but we couldn't have it at that point of time but now things are improving i would say so you know for me two things that 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 really st- uh, stand out in in a conversation right like we at least uh, when when i started getting into the whole advertising and marketing space right i remember all marketers talking about india being a one screen home right we spoke about how that screen had different prime times for different people right uh, in the in the early evenings it was such it was the college kids who came back because there was the mother who was preparing food and the father had not come home to watch you know either cricket or or, or news and then prime time time dependent on 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 you know what the family was was watching determine what you actually consume but i think over the last 10 years with mobile phones and and i think we've all we've all discussed this there is no singular screen right like we all have computers we all have mobile phones and we all have very 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 different viewing and consumption habits right which means that passion points that that consumers are actually latching onto are also becoming passion points that they can do slash consume play watch uh throughout the day at their convenience and we've obviously seen a lot of things change uh in terms of these consumption habits right so one really fun uh, factoid that uh, you know that that i read uh, somewhere while i was researching for this was that globally people spend about 8 hours 27 minutes uh you know a week on gaming and the indian number has now beaten that global average to about 8 hours and 30 minutes so obviously everybody sitting on this panel is doing something absolutely right in being able to predict what the future of uh, esports is going to be right obviously as it's already been discussed in this whole uh, over the last two days right is esports is part of the entire gaming universe right it's uh, it's like what we all keep saying that sports in india needs to grow and not only cricket uh so you know so what is the future context to what you guys are seeing over the next 2 or 3 years right because the uh the 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 pandemic almost must have come as a booster shot no puns intended to the vaccine for all of us uh you know uh over here but how do you see you know the role that each one of the stakeholders and i keep calling you stakeholders for this community because you're adding different dimensions to it to it and are while having your own reasons for backing the community right have a very important role to play in terms of where this community is going to go right so i'd like to focus on why is it important for this entire community to exist for what they are doing and most importantly for how they are going to be contributing to the community to grow at large right so i'll take that question as a as a as 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 a way forward into what uh, esports is going to be because i think that we've all heard and overcome the fact that the hardships of, over the last 3 or 4 years while you know while everybody was investing in setting this ecosystem up will now start to pay dividends right but what is it that we're going to do for the community is what uh, you know what is what i would like to hear or what is it that you would like the other stakeholders to do for the community is what i would like to understand so again uh, you know let me actually start off with uh, with siddharth because like i said i found it really hard to to put you into a slot in terms of what you guys do so let's take as broad a uh, point of view and then we'll come back into you know specifics so <clears throat> great question pratik i think again we keep drawing from analogies from industries that have already grown that we are because we are still in its nascency so if you look at sports right sports country after country league after league 
the sports massification happened because of distribution disruption epl was formed by sky sports ipl is what yeah. ipl today because of you know sony first and now star what they have been able to achieve and of course all the brands contribute to that right so if you look at the esports ecosystem esports ecosystem is essentially right here right in front of us there is an ankit sitting here there is a dr rushindra sena sitting here we need many more of those how do we get many more of those when on one side esports and gaming becomes more and more of a viable career option it becomes more of and more of a viable career option because companies like nordwin gaming put up bigger and better tournaments bigger and better prize pools whereby both fame and money gets added to the lives of ankits and dr rushindra sinhas but at the same time brands are extremely important because at the end of the day the brand sponsorships drive bulk of that revenue that is going to come to the teams that is going to come to the players right so the brands are really really important both for the players the community for companies like nordwin gaming so the brands have to pose more and more faith in the world of esports saying this is where we believe the future is this is where we are going to invest in however like i said distribution disruption which means without anirudh becoming bigger without a loco becoming bigger we can never have that disruption and again if i go back anirudh is going to become bigger because of the brand support that is going to come in so brands are going to play a very very important role in this entire ecosystem because again if you look at uh, ipl while star paid 16500 crores for five years rights to bcci star is going to recover that money predominantly on the back of sponsorship and advertising subscription is never going to yield more than 10% of that uh, money maybe 20% of that money across their oh, linear yeah. and digital platforms so that's really the future right the future is and i have i very firmly believe in this if there is one category that can give cricket run for money in the country of india it's esports and the analogy that i can give you is we were at a conference last year where a similar company like ours came from brazil and they said increasingly the young brazilians do not want to see ronaldo play football they want to see their friends play fifa on the screen now that's a massive statement for brazil because football is to brazil was cricket is to india so that's that's really how the future is going to shape up and it's happening right so it, we have come a long way as an industry in the last 5 years to just to add to what ankit said the first tournament that nordwin did our sponsorship was mark my words returnable mouse pads not even mouse pads returnable mouse pads we will give it to you put our brand after the event give us the mouse pad back that's where we started as an industry that's those are some hard words yeah so like i'm i mean i'm fairly enthused by you know by by what esports has to offer right and uh, uh amit before i come back to to rushinder and anirudh and, and and the rest uh, you know i would like to know what does this mean for a brand like yours right like you have to you know you have two objectives one is obviously to you know to look at your business functions and what it is doing for you and obviously the second is you have to also contribute into in in growing this uh whole ecosystem right because it is it is cyclical in 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 that sort of a format right and what do you see your role to be in moving this community forward and you know and and creating the right kind of impact and building the right kind of infrastructure to enable all of this because i think that's a very important part that that you're playing yeah that that's true prateek uh we see our role in two ways the first uh, is is brass tacks i think going back to what we really do uh we want to make absolute top notch uh, infrastructure and experience for gamers so it means constantly challenging ourselves and asking uh, asking the customers the community and ourselves are we uh, leveling up are we doing the best that we can to uh, to adapt to what uh, esports players want as uh, as as situations change as their uh, as they want uh, more elevated playing experiences as game titles want uh, very different experiences so that's the first thing I, i i don't think we'll ever lift our eyes off that i mean it's akin to uh, in the you know we've done a lot of comparisons with with cricket uh you know that's what uh, the bat manufacturer would first do i mean are they going to be able to turn out 
absolutely high quality stuff uh, all, all the time. That's one. The second is uh, we can play a big role, I feel, in making gaming accessible. Uh, as Lenovo, we have presence not just in uh, PCs, Hardware. but in, in tablets, in, in smartphones. And uh, again, PCs, uh, it's not just about uh, high performance uh, gaming PCs, which are top notch in terms of pricing, but how do we build smaller gaming experiences at every, at every price point? So that's one. Uh, the second is uh, to find opportunities where we can meaningfully engage and intervene. And again, there, the problem is not very different from any sports sponsorship. Now, if you look at any sports sponsorship and if you're a well-known brand, brand like a Lenovo is or a Mountain Dew is, uh, it, it's not awareness that you're, you're fighting for. You're, find, uh, you're fighting for building the right kind of equity, the right kind of presence. And uh, uh, if, if you are like, like, like a new brand, you're, you're still forming uh, your bits, it can give you large scale familiarity and awareness immediately. But if, if it is not that, uh, then it's really about being able to critically measure what's the return on, uh, on investment for the brand. And if you're able to find that sweet spot in terms of uh, uh, finding opportunities and, and presence where the community benefits, and the brand is able to transparently see uh, the value that uh, they're able to create for, for themselves, uh, that would be sweet. Now, at this point in time, I think, and that's why I admire the work Siddharth and, and their team do, because the, the, uh, before, before them, the, the space was extremely unorganized, as Ankit said, you know, a lot of scam tournaments, and that kind of takes away from the credibility uh, and, and trust. And over the last uh, seven or eight years, I've and my team has learned from you know many uh, odd odd experiences some good some some not so great but it's it's great to uh, finally see that we're coming together and uh, and we're committed to uh, to grow with the community so i'll take roi from there right like roi for business and roi for the community and who two better people to ask about roi than uh, than anirudh than, and and vineet so anirudh for you roi is obviously the key balance between uh, understanding what you're able to give to a brand and also the platform that you're creating for this game for the gamers and for the esport athletes in terms of being able to showcase uh, you know what they have to offer uh, so you know how are you going to be able to maintain that balance and you know therefore what do you think is the role of uh, of loco and platforms like yourself in this entire uh, you know esports and gaming ecosystem i think you know uh, the traditional way of thinking about the balance pits one against the other, whereas yeah. actually it doesn't have to be that way. And, uh, you know, that's, I think the big difference that something like this has, like, we don't mind if, uh, you know, Roshinder is going to wear a Nike Jersey. I think he's not going to mind. And his, uh, his audience is not going to mind that, right? If he says the right things and he represents the kind of values that a certain advertiser wants there's going to be no issue with that on the same uh, in the same way with local let's say we produ produce products from an advertising point of view that enhance your viewing experience that enhance your interactive experience you're not going to mind that and i think we've seen that in short video content we've delivered tremendous value to a lot of people in the advertising ecosystem that's why they keep working with us so sure. for us, from a point of view we think of advertisers as our partners who are going to work with us to make these things happen. And they're sitting on the same uh, same table as us. They're first class citizen on that table. So is our ad team. So it's not like there's some other, you know, this balance uh, is, I feel, an old media point of view on how the world should be run. No product should, you know, no ad product should be in loco if it is not given the same respect as uh, another product. And I think really what's happening is, you know, I think Sid touched on it a little bit earlier. You have 300 million plus gamers in India today. 100 million plus gamers are monthly active users of these battle royale games. Yeah. We have not even seen this category grow yet. You know, it's like PUBG, Free Fire. We're talking about two games. You're going to see a lot of games come out. You're also going to see India getting wealthier in the next five years. So again, PCs, consoles are going to improve. Mobile is going to explode. Right. So you're going to start seeing the kind of participation numbers that are eye popping. And the most important thing is that you sitting in a, your kid sitting in a second tier, third tier city 
right? You don't have the kind of facilities in terms of, you know, mall or something else to do, uh, you know, entertainment avenues. You will spend time online, not only as a, uh, you know, as an entertainment experience for yourself, but to meet other people as a social hangout. So social bonds across India are getting stronger. They're spending time practicing these games. So you're going to see the MS Dhonis of this world come soon. We have not seen them yet. I mean, I think, you know, Ankit, uh, you know, you see some of the guys in the PUBG ecosystem, you know, Thug or uh, Ghatak or these kind of guys who have dedicated their lives to bringing the ecosystem up. Yeah. You're going to see the fruits of that very soon when you're going to actually have guys that, you know, uh, Vineet can really, really say proudly that, yeah, I'm associated with this person. And I think we're we're very, very close to that uh, moment. And, you know, you're going to have brands then see which kind of game they want to associate themselves with. If they want casual, more casual fun, they may associate themselves with a clash. They want more action, fast-paced action. They may go with, uh, you know, a PUBG or a Free Fire. Right? So they will start seeing where the, what the audiences are, what is their point of view. They will find those things. And then most importantly, it's an entertainment experience. So again, uh, borrowing from what Sid said, you're going to have to have the right kind of producer. You could, for an IPL, you need an IPL to be produced at that quality. You need Correct. that kind of players there. You need that credibility. Then you need that delivery. So those all things have to be done by us. You know, I always joke that Khan Market in Delhi was not built by one store. A bunch of stores had to come together to make that place a place worth visiting for a shopper. Sure. If you look at that for the audience, we have to build that. And we are doing that um, today. And I think we have not seen the numbers yet, right? I mean, if you're seeing... Uh, kind of the numbers that PUBG or, you know, with Scout, these kind of guys were doing on concurrency, it beats a lot of Premier League games in India. But yeah, the 200,000 concurrence is not a joke. No, not even, you know, the best content on YouTube, which is some of the content we've made, get that gets that kind of numbers and that's high value, great production. Sure. So we have not seen anything yet. I think you're going to see much bigger numbers. And I think one really important thing that guys like Vineet and... Uh, uh, Amit are doing is that you don't remember the IPL sponsor today as much as you remember the first IPL sponsor. You remember the Wills Correct. World Cup, you remember the Prudential World Cup because they took the risk when others were just waiting and watching and waiting for it to become hygiene. Cricket is hygiene today. right? Everyone can do it. Everyone knows it's big. But these guys are onto a secret. So you will see them getting 10x the returns of the guy who comes six years from now. And for at that point, it will not be a uh, uh, it will not be a choice. It will be a necessity that you have to participate in this ecosystem. No, and and, and also I, I think uh, I think Ankit said that correctly, right? Like for him, the people who backed him right at the start of his journey, right? Like I mean, those are the people who will leave back uh, leave back legacy, right? So, I mean, and it's always I mean retrospection is twenty twenty vision, right? But I think that all of you are sitting over here and like. Like Vineet's brand says, that kya ge jeet hai. I think you guys have already, you know, moved in that sort of a direction. So, Vineet, for you, do you do you really think that uh, that you know uh, the massive statements made on this panel, right? Like the statements of like you know, esports is is the only you know we've always had this joke saying that India has five big sports: cricket, 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 and cricket. Uh, you know, and uh, do you think that uh, that 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 esports will break into this into this top five? Uh, and you know, therefore, create opportunities as a community from a brand lens like yours, um, and tap onto that passion point that I always know Pepsi wants to you know wants to always be with. Sure. No, I think for personally for me, uh, from a beverage brand perspective, on Mountain Dew, we do a billion plus transactions every year, and but out of those billion plus transactions, almost twenty eight to thirty percent of the people are actually people who are very passionate about gaming, and they do spend time on gaming. In fact, people who spend time on gaming typically spend two times the time that they spend on YouTube as compared to YouTube, they spend two times the time on gaming. So therefore, clearly there's a very strong passion which is there. I think the opportunity is uh, that it is right now extremely fragmented and therefore the opportunity for brand to integrate for a, from a brand perspective, I would love to integrate. For example, IPL is a very seamless forum. It's, it's one of these things. So the opportunity is there to say if we can get an equivalent of an IPL or equivalent of a, 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 a platform which is created which has that, which has the numbers, because the numbers are there for gaming as a system, as an ecosystem, but they are all fragmented very much. So that's the opportunity right. to see if someone can bring it all together on a single platform, that can be very powerful. For example, for us, for example, you, if the Darky Agadi, the philosophy in gaming, there's a genre of gaming, which is about, let's say, comparative sports. And people do say that suddenly there, there are too many people when they're 
the space is going down, there are too many people surrounded and therefore there's fear that I might die. And then there's an opportunity to get integration of your philosophy with that gaming. But I think that it's, it's an opportunity waiting to be taken. It's just about getting the right aggregation of the platform. The numbers are clearly there on the overall uh, system. So, uh, so Rushinder, do you think that we have the infrastructure today, uh, you know, to, to create this platform, right? That brings uh, Ankit and brings, you know, like Vineet and brings the viewers, right? Which are the consumers of all of the products that we're, that we're trying to push to them um, all together. And, you know, what do you see is the contribution of, uh, of a platform like yours in, in the future? And, and, you know, where do you see, where do you see the numbers grow? Where do you see your contribution? Where do you see your investments coming in? Uh, over the next uh, two to three years. Um, so obviously, there's there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of questions in there. So I'll begin with firstly. I think uh, Siddharth and Anirudh really covered a lot of the points as well as uh, Amit and Vinit. I think from a sponsorship perspective, it's going in the right direction. Obviously, it could be a lot better. What's happened is over the the, the last few years, we have evolved to the point where now it's not if gaming will grow and if esports will grow but when sure. we're already seeing this tectonic shift happen where younger consumers you know especially those below the age of 20 21 would rather play a video game and would you know focus their energy on playing a game at home as opposed to you know what something like netflix I, I think i read somewhere beautifully netflix says that the biggest competitor is not hulu or star or any of the other ott platforms it's a game like fortnite because if all the kids are spending all their time playing video games they're not going to watch uh, uh, you know they're not going to watch tv shows or movies on an OTT platform because it, uh, playing a video game is a lot more engaging and there's a lot more that they can do. It's a lot more interactive, especially during the pandemic. You know, we use this line a lot that uh, gaming brought back the social and social distancing. So I know friends, families, a lot of people that got together using, uh, you know, using gaming as a platform in general. And the good thing about that is it didn't really require any marketing. No one had to go out and say, yeah, play this game. It'll help you pass your time. It's something that happened so organically and passively that people go out and start seeking games and start seeking places where they can, you know, kind of not necessarily, but escape from reality to a certain point. And we have seen that happen obviously, especially over the last one year, when people are locked in their homes, we've seen that, uh, you know, that habitual change and that habit formation. Now, when these people grow up, their kids and, you know, their families are going to just spend more time playing video games. It's like how with people of my generation, we grew up watching cricket. So that's what we wanted to play. That's what we wanted to see. That's what we connected to and related to in terms of sports, you know, 10 years from now, today's generation of kids are going to only connect to esports. They're going to connect to, say, you know, a Valorant game, a PUBG game, and not going to connect to tennis or golf or cricket as much. So it's just an eventuality. We're already seeing that happen with hundreds of millions of gamers, not just in India, but across the globe. We're seeing that shift happen. And it's just a matter of time. I, I think all the people that got in early, whether it's the sponsors, whether it's the esports organizations like us, whether it's players like Ankit, platforms like what Nordwin and Loco are trying to create, all the people that got in early are really going to see the uh, see the ROI, so to speak, and are going to be at the advantages end of being at the top of the wave uh, while it's happening, while everyone else is going to have to play catch up. So Ankit, I've asked everybody what they're going to do. I think with you, I'll ask, what do you want? Uh, because the way, the rate at which these people have spoken, I think, uh, you know, if nobody else, I think you have the best seat in the house, right? Like, uh, and, and as an athlete, uh, you know, and since all sports are, are, you know, are touted nowadays to, you know, to really spoil the athletes, uh, I'd like to ask you a question. How would you like to be spoiled, sir? <laughs> I would like to be spoiled by having more, uh, tournaments i feel and uh, having a chance to you know represent our uh, country on the international platform we need more of such tournaments because that's what you know drives an athlete i started because i wanted to you know hold that uh, flag in, on an international stage so i think more events and uh, a bit of prize pool uh, should be increased because in india i don't feel uh, an athlete can you know only depend on uh, the tournament winnings because you can't predict which tournament you're going to win. The competition is rising. Sometimes you'll win, sometimes you will lose. And if uh, that was the case in uh, you know my scenario, my parents wouldn't have allowed me to pursue this uh, till now. Thanks to the brands who are supporting me and thanks to the events that are happening. So consistently, slowly, slowly from you know playing uh, one uh, event to having ESL India Premiership like thrice in a year, now we slowly have you know more events. Uh, Valorant has actually you know helped the scene a lot. 
after pubg mobile uh, gone valorant picked up and uh, all the influencers all the pubg mobile guys they started playing valorant so that got a lot of eyeballs uh, rolling towards that game and it picked up so more tournaments more uh, uh, tournaments where we can represent our country and a little bit of increased prize pool and the consistency of all of these things would definitely help i'd like to actually ask you another question right like uh, you know there's there's also a certain kind of a responsibility that 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 you will have uh, towards uh, the athletes who are actually coming uh, you know coming into the system as well right because uh, i think uh, uh, siddharth said this correctly and, and and you know everybody touched upon it is that the importance or the growth of this um, of this ecosystem will also depend on the quality of athletes and the people that we can actually rally behind right so again going back to the cricket analogy there was a couple day there was neil gavaskar there was sachin tendulkar there is now virat kohli and ms dhoni or rohit sharma right um, and i think that the evolution of these athletes has also coincided with the evolution that cricket has taken in this country right because they they have become demi gods they have become uh, people that people aspire to be uh, so you know as a person who's sitting right on top of this food chain uh, ankit what do you think are your responsibilities towards representing this athlete community and also nurturing this athlete community as you as you as you go along so that has started happening i would say i'm not bragging about myself but i have uh, seen you know people uh, touch my feet at events uh i've seen people put my pictures uh, in their home temple i've seen people get my uh, get their parents to you know meet me earlier i used to get scared ki ab padhne wali hai because i am a gamer and they are going to say you are spoiling my child what is this nonsense but uh, at intel esl1 you know there was a beautiful thing that happened parents were standing in a queue when the chance came they spoke to me for like for 15 20 minutes and uh, his dad was like uh, my son used to you know follow virat kohli Uh, Lionel Messi, and now he says, "I want to become like Ankit Van Ampen." Just because of you, he has uh, joined the gym. He has, you know, he used to uh, use a lot of slang language. He has stopped that, and I'm proud that you know you have inspired him. I used to think uh, uh, that you know all gamers are kind of very aggressive, and uh, my son shouldn't pursue this. But after seeing you talking to you, you have changed my thinking, and I'm glad that he has taken you as an inspiration. I'm fully going to support him. He wanted a PC. Now I'm going to get him one. so that is the kind of thing i've started doing that you are not going to become when i mean just one day you are not going to become uh, an esports athlete by just forcing your parents to you know get a, get you a pc it takes years of hard work yes you might see that i am wearing this cap i am a red bull athlete i have uh, i am the brand ambassador of alien with dell and so many brands are sponsoring but it has took me a lot of time to you know uh, get all these things so it, you have to prepare yourself you have to balance life and you have to also understand that being in this industry you have to do things like you need you need passion and you have to be very uh, you know uh, very hard working because it's not going to be like a single uh, short thing like where, where you you know one one match and you're going to get a lot of sponsors it doesn't happen it doesn't work that way so that's what i'm tr- telling all my fans and i'm trying to you know uh, from my experiences make them understand these things so i think the you know there's only one question that beckons now i think uh, which is uh, i think we have all the ingredients to make a really successful you know bull run in the you know in the esports and esports space right and i think we have a fairly great representation of all the uh, all the people and all the platforms and you know all the athletes who are going to contribute towards this uh, you know uh, however a large part of the success of an ecosystem or a community depends on just one question right how do we work together uh because you know we may try and achieve a lot of things in silos but uh the ability for people like yourselves on this panel to come together work with work with each other uh you know and just very quickly you know before we wrap up and before we just give out closing remarks uh, i just like you know probably two lines from each of you of you know how you would like for a lot of people to work together to make this you know work like a well oiled machine that it is slated to be right like the only difference between in my opinion the success of this now or later is the ability for all of us to sit here and work together so you know just very quick two lines on that and and then you know i'll try and wrap up uh, so you know let's start uh, siddharth you've been waiting very patiently but please go for it I think uh, Pratik, the the mantra is really what the digital economy has shown to the world, right? So before the digital economy, the world was siloed into I am a provider, I am a customer, uh, you know, I am a processor, 
but that has all blurred. Everyone is now playing multiple roles. I am a consumer and a supplier at the same time. So I think the, really the key to success of this industry is collaboration. We need to be very clear of what we bring to the table and collaborate with each other rather than trying to do everything ourselves. And I think that's how we are going to grow. We need, we will grow together by collaborating, not by competing with each other. Roshinder, you want to, you want to add to that? Uh, no, I think uh, what you said is absolutely right. What a lot of people we saw early on in the industry tried to do is everyone was fighting for the bigger piece of the pie. While I think now the players in the ecosystem are realizing that it makes more sense in trying to grow the pie rather than fighting for the existing 100 million gamers. Let's all work together and find out how we can get to a billion gamers. And then automatically, obviously, everyone does get a bigger piece of the pie. So right now, I think all the focus, at least what we have seen in the last few months or rather the last year and a half, two years, the entire focus of the ecosystem has been towards growing it, getting more people involved, whether it's in the form of content, whether it's in the form of bigger tournaments, making it more accessible, getting international logs to India, working with sponsors. I think the entire ecosystem as a whole, all the players at the top of the food chain, thankfully, have now started working together. And it's just, I, I think the gaming industry for the next three to five years in India is going to be absolutely brilliant. And we're going to leave a lot of the Western countries behind. We have a head start, especially when it comes to mobile. And we should really take advantage of that and go forward. I think we have a head start on the basis of population, actually. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and I don't think they'll ever catch up on that number. But I think for me, uh, you know, what is most important is, is, is the fact that while this ecosystem is asking everybody to work together, um, I think that there's one, there's one stakeholder that, you know, that, that we all have to work with, right. And which is where I'll get the next three comments in, which is regulations, um, the government and regulatory bodies, right? Because uh, that will also determine the pace at which this industry will grow or slow down or, you know, however we see it, right? So, you know, so while we're talking about the collaboration, you know, uh, Amit, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you would like for this to be formalized? Look, one of the examples that all of us have seen uh, in the marketing industry uh, or industry per se uh, in the last few years is uh, mutual fund Sahi Hai. And that right. was an amazing example of how players across came together and uh, build awareness for the category and remove uh, even some of the stigma that uh, you know that may have been there or barriers that may have been there. I think Correct. we need to, uh, time is ripe for a formal structure to be in place. Uh, and uh, as much as we may not enjoy the bureaucracy or the red tape or the lack of speed that comes uh, with it. Uh, we need structure, we need a certain uh, formalization. And it is a, like you said, a multi-sectoral problem. Many people have to come together to be Correct. able to, uh, to be able to do it. And then uh, build positive stories, positive role models. Uh, uh, we need uh, more people like Ankit, we need Ankit to go out to more people. And, and that's Correct. how I think we're going to have a, have a breakout. Anirudh? I think there are three really important things that we all have to do. One is to realize what time it is, right? It's, is it a time to invest or is it a time to harvest? Um, and it's time to invest. So I think that people should, you know, we cannot bear the fruits of something that we've not put the hard work in for. And there will be capital uh, put in. We've put in one of the most largest checks in this ecosystem in the last year, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, second is, I think, not forgetting who this is for. It's for the audiences and it's for the players. So putting them first, recognizing what their interests are, protecting them, and giving them the best entertainment to the audience is the best way to interact, the best way to express themselves. That is really, really important. We forget that in the larger scheme of things. If you have that Correct. as a clear mission, I think that's important. And from the government side, I think we need clarity. We don't need too much governance. We just need some simple clarity. Right? Real money gaming is not esports. It's a very simple it doesn't require a scientist to know that, right? Um, the, uh, you know, what is esports? How are we going to protect people? How are we going to protect players? And that's it. We just need simple rules. And what those rules are, the government should put out and you'll follow those rules. But we don't need too many rules, just simple clarity for all of us to operate. And I think you will see, uh, you know, we'll bring back medals at multiple uh, games this in the next uh, decade. Vineet, uh, you know, how would you see, you know, like the participation of everybody to make this, you know, the best branded product out there for you and for your brand? 
I think uh, it, it starts with the consumer for me, for everyone. In fact, I think we have to Correct. find ways to elevate the consumer experience, both for people who play and both for people who view as Anirudh said. It's almost like cricket with the example which Siddharth gave initially. We started off with a five-day test matches, then we eventually we went down to a one-day match, then eventually went down to T20. While all these changes were have happened, I think the viewership increased, the interest increased, and therefore. It, it it was also elevating the consumer experience to say I don't have so much time. Give me that excitement of that thing in a you know this thing. So I think it has to be started. Gaming as an ecosystem has to become big where we elevate the consumer experience, giving people what they want, and elevate it to a level where it does more than just sort of vicarious vicarious participation. So I think it's about really fundamentally looking at it and saying how can we give the best experience for the players on one side and for the viewers on the other side. Ankit, what about you? These guys summed it up uh, perfectly. Like government, simple rules, and uh, once they announce that, then you know it'll help uh, us to convince our parents uh, more easily that see this is government recognized. Earlier, when I started it, they thought I was gambling in a dark cafe where you know computers are there. They didn't understand computers. They didn't understand machines. So one. thing would definitely help where you know government say that this is esports they are our athletes we have an indian team and you know they are representing our country uh, maybe in olympics or asian games so i mean i think that you know like like for me like you know i started off this uh, this whole panel by saying that the one thing that really strikes out when 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 we are chatting or when we are looking at this entire industry is passion and how passion percolates you know through any sort of a, a barrier that you put in front of it um i think we've got a booster shot in terms of you know the lockdown and the pandemic uh the hardware is 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 setting in our ability to create content around gaming our ability to consume content from a consumer point of view whether it becomes technologies that are you know enabling it whether it's internet speeds whether it's you know mobile phones um and also the the cost of entry right or the you know or the or just the ability for a lot more people to access and to want to be this uh you know seems like a passion that can not be controlled by most external factors right so while we've we've spoken about what we think we are at today uh personally for me after this uh, after this panel uh the future seems a lot more bright but one of the things that 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 I'll take out of this is that we got to recognize all the stakeholders that are being represented on this panel and the importance of all of these stakeholders to actually work together to give a truly consumer focused uh experience that will then bring back to the community what the community actually deserves right which is the name fame glory and the fans and the fan glory that comes with it because i think that we're all in a you know at a time where if we play this correctly as an ecosystem we can really propel this into like i said becoming one of the top 5 sports in this country and uh yeah thank you so much everybody i think uh, everybody gave a very honest point of view on 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 where they are at and and i think the stories came together fairly well to create this narrative of what the future of e uh, esports looks like thank you everybody thank you so much thank you, you so much guys thank you thank you so much pradeep and ankit thank you so much thank you so much thank you thank you so much pratik for sharing this really interesting conversation and thank you to all our panelists for your time and sharing your insights with us i'm sure all those uh, startup gamers uh, the new gaming uh, companies and even all the stakeholders have taken some great takeaways from this conversation so once again we'd like to thank all of you for your time